I always wondered what are the impacts. I made exactly the same though, and I wanted to check what happens when I proof this one at room temperature versus this one slightly at room temperature and then in the fridge. Which one is going to have a better crop? So that's what this experiment is about. So let's lift the Dutch oven and have a look. Oh! <laughs> Let me rewind here for a second. First, I'm going to show you how to pre-shape and how to shape to maximize the openness of your crop. I figured that's great knowledge to have. Of course, if you want to jump to the results and the conclusion, you can use the chapters which I added to this video. But now, please enjoy the experiment. So this is the dough. I took a small sample and that small sample has roughly doubled in size and now it's time to shape this dough. Let me pause here for a second. This small hack with the sample is going to make you a better baker. It's so much easier than relying on timings. All you do is extract a small sample and then observe that sample and see its size increase. Now, depending on your flour's protein content, you have to look for a different size increase. It should be anywhere between 25% and 100%. In this case, my flour has roughly 15% protein, so it can ferment for a long time. That's why I'm opting for the 100% size increase. And this is also very important in case you're a chaser of that epic open crump. You want to inflate your dough as much as possible. Plus, you also want to have a very elastic dough, and you get that by using a lot of water. Unfortunately, this also makes dough handling a little bit more difficult. So, don't try this with cheap all-purpose flour. You need to have proper bread flour with a high protein content. Okay, sorry, there's one exception. You could also be tweaking your all-purpose flour by adding some gluten. But that's another topic. I'm sorry, I'm getting overly excited and sidetracked. This could be a whole other video. Okay, let's proceed with the pre-shaping and shaping. This is where it all comes together. I'm now going to proceed by applying one coil fold. This makes it easier for the dough to be removed from the container. You shouldn't overdo the coil folding in the end of the bulk fermentation because you will also be evening out your crumb a little bit. I'm really trying to be as careful as possible because I don't want to damage the nice pockets of air that we build throughout the bulk fermentation. I was considering for a second to weigh the dough, but then I thought, okay, I'm just going to roughly eyeball it. I tried to hit the center, but of course it's not 100% exactly the same weight. For the pre-shaping, I'm also very, very careful because I don't want to overdo this because this is also going to even out the crumb quite a lot. So just really a short pre-shaping to have a nice round dough ball. Afterwards, I'm just going to be letting them sit for around 30 minutes. It's quite cold these days and I want them to uh, elongate a little bit. I want the gluten to relax and that makes it easier to shape because I have a bigger surface area in the end. So both have been shaped and now I will be letting this one sit at room temperature until it passes the finger poke test. This is when this springs back very, very slowly. And this one I will let sit at room temperature for 30 minutes and then I'll be pulling this into the fridge overnight for roughly 16 hours. 
You might be wondering why exactly 16 hours and 30 minutes at room temperature. Well, that's the tricky and annoying thing about the retarding, also known as cold proofing. When you proof at room temperature, you can just use the finger poke test and that's a super reliable method that you can always reproduce. And being an engineer, we, we love reproducibility. That's the hard word to pronounce. So with the fridge proofing, that does not work. Your dough is too stiff in the end and the finger poke test simply won't pass. So some people like to prove it directly in the fridge for 24 hours. But if you want to go a little bit less, you should add a small proofing stage at room temperature before. So let's say you would do one hour at room temperature, then you might just want to be doing eight hours inside of the fridge. So you can make this work for your schedule a little bit. This of course also depends a lot on the temperature inside of your fridge. So the only thing I can tell you is you have to experiment on those values a little bit yourself, unfortunately. 30 minutes later, let's have a look at the finger poke test. You can see it already springs back a little slower. And now this one here is going right into the fridge and this one will continue fermenting at room temperature. The fridge has around 10 degrees because I just opened it, but I guess more here towards the end. Uh, I think a reliable temperature to check would be okay so my fridge right now it's warming up fridge temperature here on this rack around eight degrees celsius the further i would put the dough down the colder the fridge of course gets 30 minutes in again this is how the dough now looks like mm-hmm it's getting there. I guess this is going to probably take another hour roughly. This has been almost two and a half hours, so proofing at this temperature just takes a little bit longer. Interesting how this is now colder than the surface here. Finger poke test one more time. You can see it springs back, but it stays there for a little bit. I did this then just a few minutes ago and it still stays here. So this one is perfect. This one should go into the oven right now. I'm opting for a Dutch oven because this is a very easy way to bake bread. It creates a lot of steam. It always makes the perfect bread. What I did here is I placed a little bit of semolina flour here on top just because I don't want this to stick to the preheated Dutch oven. Now, no need to invest money in a Dutch oven. If you don't have one, that's totally okay. I have baked some of my best breads without it. All you want to do is you want to place a bowl at the bottom of your oven. It should be something that can withstand high heat, not glass. Preheat that for around 30 minutes. Then place your bread on a tray in the end and place another tray on top. This indirect heat makes sure that you have a very, very steamy environment. Next step, you want to have boiling water ready and you want to pour that boiling water into that dish. This creates insane amounts of steam exactly what you want for maximum oven spring i was surprised how well i was able to score this bread typically i have issues with those at room temperature but that's the extra rub of flour i gave the dough before placing it inside of the banneton i always like to give the loaf another good spritz The bread stuck a little bit. Uh, I didn't add any additional rice flour, lesson learned. Next time, definitely some more rice flour. I just hope the loaf in the fridge doesn't stick as much. The bread is going to be baking now for 25 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius, uh, lid covered so that there's a lot of steam. Then I'll remove the lid and bake it for another 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how dark I like the bread to be. A good hack is you can just use a small thermometer something like this for instance and just oh so what happened to my thermometer <laughs> no and uh, measure the temperature of your dough it's ready the moment the temperature reached 92 degrees celsius okay i definitely need to check what's going on here bread number one this bread truly turned out amazing, especially since I haven't fully proofed at room temperature for a long time. Plus, we even have some blisters. 
But it's already getting quite late, so time to sleep and continue the next day. I'm really excited to see whether this beautiful loaf can also compete in terms of the crumb. Wakey wakey my dough! This is our dough after the fridge proofing. Roughly 6 degrees Celsius now here on the surface. So at 6 degrees the fermentation almost comes to a halt. And you can see also that it didn't increase in size that, that much. I hope this is going to have a lot of oven spring as well. Oh, and even more than oven spring, I'm of course very curious whether this uh, dough here is also going to make an amazing open crumb like this one. Well, I have not checked this, but I hope this one has an open crumb. So stay tuned. Um, this is going to be fun. Uh, and it comes right off. I'm also curious to see whether this one is going to have more blisters than the other one. Because as far as I know, the cold temperature also helps with the blister uh, creation on the crust. Okay. Very easy to score because it's cold. As always, I'm giving this a good spritz with some water. And please, oven spring! Give me some oven spring! Oh, and a good spritz of water inside here too. Bye! See you in 25 minutes. Half time. This is always the moment of eternal happiness or <laughs> crying. Is this a pancake or does this have a nice looking ear? So let's lift the Dutch oven and have a look. Oh! <laughs> look at this masterpiece. And look at those nice bubbles here on the crust. Wow, this is amazing. Back to the oven for another 20 minutes. Ta-da! This one really looks perfect. Look at this amazing ear. Look at the nice crust. I really love those crispy bubbles. Perfect. Now the question is, which one is going to have a better crumb? I will just be letting them sit for a little bit and then I'll be back probably two hours or so until this really nicely cooled down. I don't want to damage the crust with too excited cutting. Although there's nothing better that could happen right now than taking a fresh slice and eating that with a little bit of butter. So I'll behave myself, trying not to eat something, although it smells so delicious. And then let's have a look at the crumb. On the right, the fridge proofed and on the left, the one made at room temperature. Number one, the one which I just proved at room temperature. Mm, what a delicious looking crumb. Look at those nice pockets of air. Some irregularities here. That might have been because I did not pop some of the bubbles during the shaping, but this is looking so wild. Mm. <laughs> and the scent this one has. I'm really excited to taste this one. Also nice looking bunny shape here. This is, to me, a perfect sourdough. And next up, the one which I proofed 30 minutes at room temperature and then another 16 hours in the fridge. And look at those nice uh, bubbles here on the crust. Just in comparison, it even has a few more bubbles, I would say, than this one. This one is really also perfect. I could have improved the shaping a little bit, but I'm very excited to see the crumb of this one. Since this one I baked today, this one, the other one I baked yesterday, this one is gonna be a little bit more crispy even. Also looking very good. Nice pockets of air here, good crumb, a little wild. This one is looking perfect as well. Maybe I think it's not as open as on the other one. Let's give this a shot. 
interesting if you look at this. So this one here definitely has a little bit more vertical oven spring than the other one. However, crump wise, I would say that this one actually won a little bit. I like the crump on this bread a little bit more. So the conclusion, of course, I was not able to really isolate all the parameters. So it might have been that probably my shaping or so was not as good on this one as on this one. But since I shaped them regularly, I don't think that's that big of an issue. However, looking at the airiness of both crumbs, I think you can clearly say that proofing inside of the fridge is not going to make you a better, more open crumb. This bread here, which I proved at room temperature, definitely has an amazing crumb as well. Plus, I was able to use the finger poke test to determine when the bread was ready. Sure, scoring was a little bit more difficult, but even for this bread here, if you just compare the ears, it still looks very good. I would say the winner of this experiment is the bread which I just proved at room temperature. Of course, what you need to consider, it was very late already yesterday. So in that case, the 30 minutes plus the 16 hours in the fridge definitely helped with my schedule. Proofing in the fridge is definitely not better than proofing at room temperature in terms of the crumb. The taste is of course another question whether the taste is different on this one because the fermentation happened at a lower temperature than at this one. But just for, from the crumb perspective, um, I wouldn't say this one clearly won. So the one at room temperature has an equally amazing crumb. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. I'm now going to finish eating all of those breads.